The following is a paid program and does not necessarily reflect the views or ideas of the staff or management of KWSH or the 110 Broadcast Group. Hey, 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 good morning, and welcome to another edition of the Seminole Nation radio program. I am Bo Whitekiller here in the studios of KWSH 1260, the legendary 1260, and 97.7 on your FM. I've uh, got a little bit of information, news, updates, some things that are going on, and uh, I'm going to put my uh, right hand on the spot today. He's going to be uh, coming in sharing some of his uh his information as a filmmaker and what he's been doing because a lot of the things that you see well all the things that you see as far as uh, filming wise and some of the documentaries some of the things that's been doing here the last year of uh dealing with Seminole nation activities it's uh been uh, none other than mark d williams our resident chata filmmaker uh so he'll be in here get him on the other side of the camera to share a little bit of information on how he processes and what he does and what he looks for in the story and and just a little bit about himself uh, so but we'll do that here in a little bit but uh just how was your weekend did you have a long weekend did you uh get out and do things and or did you stay inside and take care of yourself and safe be safe you know those things like that uh, still matter uh, we got out and played basketball this week weekend with uh one of my daughters and uh, i was kind of surprised to see the uh, the amount of people that were out. I mean, everybody wanted to get out and stretch their legs a little bit. But at this one gym where they played basketball at in Norman, Sportsplex, many of you may be familiar with it, large complex with about uh, six basketball uh, hardwood floors. Uh, the, there was a group of uh, uh, folks that my daughter plays for out of Shawnee. It was full. It was full. And masks were very, very well in the minority there. But uh, they did have precautions such as uh, using san- hand sanitizer and utilizing a social distancing and uh, spraying things down whenever in between games. So you can kind of see that the new normal is in effect. People are still trying to uh, make sure that the things are done right to, to get through this. It's still not over. It's still not over. I noticed over the weekend, too, that uh, right now the count currently, I'm sure they'll have another count here in about 30 minutes. But the count currently stands as uh, 23, 23, with one uh, in Conowa recorded and one in Seminole recorded uh, p- uh, from the 21 that was last week. So that's where we're at. But the good thing is 19 have recovered, and we continue to look forward to those things uh, as we progress onward. That being said, uh, we do have COVID-19 drive through testing ongoing at the Wawoka IHS. Uh, if uh, any of you have seen the uh, posting last week, it's Thursday or Friday, uh, you got to see uh, some some uh, activity going on down there early morning when it was raining. The team down there at the Wawoka IHS uh, drive through facility uh, were out there in the rain, braving the elements, and uh, administered the COVID-19 test to uh, Chief Choco, myself. Um, and it was... Uh, painless it was painless it's not natural to have something stuck up your nose that's about uh six or seven inches but uh it was pretty pretty painless um but lead by example that's the one thing we're looking at lead by example and uh i can report today that uh you know we're both of us are are good and healthy and well on our way to another day of Seminole nation activity so if you want a covid19 test woke ihs says we can test you just call 405-982 Four five one four to schedule an appointment because they're only taking an appointment basis to get to get tested. So that'll be a curb, curbside test, and you wait around 20, 30 minutes, and they can give you the results. So it's available only to Woka Indian Health Center patients. Uh, if you have a chart down there, and if you don't have a chart and you're stijat, well, you can get one on site too. Just allow for about 45 minutes to get it up and running. 
Another uh, question that's been coming across our communications desk is, when will the Seminole Nation casinos open? Are you open? Are you open? When will you open? Well, uh, from the Seminole Nation Casino Public Relations Office, we can tell you that in efforts to limit exposure and spread of COVID-19, all casinos are currently closed and remain closed. However, there is a tentative reopening date, a tentative tentative underline tentative meaning things can change it's fluid dynamic tentative reopening date is june 15th 2020 so i'm sure on the days leading up to june 15th the uh, casino staff and administration will be looking uh, to see how things are in our area keep in mind one of the things that we determining factors is that we are a small county we are a small group of individuals within the nation that um, any any one thing could uh, set set off a uh, uptick so that's uh, what a lot of the guidelines and the recommendations that we get from the CDC and the state uh, Oklahoma State Department of Health we're all taking those in consideration as well as our woke IHS facility folks and our public health service officer Billy Porter continually reevaluating and, and uh, looking at data daily so from this Casino Nation Casino Management Team, tentative reopening date, June 15th, 2020. Also noticed on the news today, too, it's kind of off the, off the wall, but uh, a, if you have the Sonic app, if you try to order hamburgers from Sonic, there's a meat shortage. Some of your, uh, some of your uh, orders may come back. Uh, I noticed in, here in Semino, uh I did pull up. I think it was Friday to Sonic and tried to order a hamburger, but they they, they were limited on what they could uh, put out. So I guess that's some news. You try to go up to Sonic and get you a number two um, with jalapenos and mayonnaise. Oh wait, that's what I want. But if you try to get those things, you know there's a meat shortage. So you know those things like that are are some of the um, some of the ramifications of COVID nineteen. So. Let us know how is the uh, how has it affected your out uh, running around and out uh, going and eating and restaurants and things like that. Um, how's it how's this COVID nineteen affected your takeout? Let us know at uh, Seminole Media at gmail dot com or contact us at communications office at four zero five three eight two one zero one zero. All right. We do have some updates from the uh, COVID-19 response team uh, meeting. The next meeting will be this Friday. Uh, we did have one of the council members come to the meeting last week. Uh, you follow band representative Jeff Harjo. He's also part of the um, staff at where he works in his uh, civilian work. Uh, he's part of a casino which has reopened. And he gave us really good insight on how they're operating and what they're doing uh, in relation to this COVID-19. Um, a lot of it is sanitizing, um, you know, social distancing. Uh, certain machines are being left open on the end so that players can use. Um, a lot of the uh, entrance way, you know, the entrance and exit was, is policed so that uh, an, an, an account of personnel made. So things like that are or what they're doing uh, uh, for that nation, that tribal nation, to ensure that some of the casinos open and and how how that uh, insight was pretty valuable to us in the decision making going forward. And again, this COVID nineteen response team made up of a group of uh, directors and individual program managers uh, to start to facilitate how and get ideas on how we can best move forward and get the nation open. One of the recommendations um, was made was for some uh, improvements at the uh, complex. You know, once the complex gets ready to open up, improvements on entrance, exit, facilities, access to services and programs that's within, inside the complex. Those things are being looked at on how we can um, manage and, and safely uh, provide the services for, for folks that are coming in. The one area that is really important is the tribal enrollment office. as one of our most visited services and uh, the, to facilitate any uh, continuing action uh, there's going to be a, a big overhaul in that uh, area and then and access to that area so again a lot of these meetings are how we can uh, uh, how we can actually get uh, projects going what's it going to take and a time frame 
Uh, if you have any information, excuse me, if you ha have any questions and about the COVID CARES Act funding for the Seminole Nation, I encourage you to go to our Seminole Nation website and the Seminole Nation Facebook page. Uh, as this afternoon, we'll be putting up some updated information on both, uh, showing in the PDF files uh, frequently asked questions and uh, guidance through um, the U.S. Treasury Department on how these things are, are going forward. Another question that comes up, when am I going to get my money? What are you going to do for the nation? How am I going to get this money? Are you providing money for me? You know, so these kind of questions like that, you know, is there a per cap involved or these things that are, that are part of this CARES Act funding? Is that, is that going to happen? You know, or when is it going to happen or what, what, what amount are we getting? Those things like that, again, it's very time consuming to make sure that everybody gets their ducks in a row as far as the funding. The Treasury, I can assure you that the Treasury Office is diligently looking along with the accounting and um, advisors through uh, D.C. office uh, how to go forward so that we cannot go backwards in it. If uh, someone loaned you a certain amount of money and you were obligated to spend that money the way you said you wanted to spend that money, but you find out that uh, some of the money that you spend is not necessarily within the guidelines of the lender, chances are you're going to have to pay it back. When you pay it back, it's uh, damaging to credibility. It's damaging to anything that uh, uh, you've built to try to move yourself forward. Those things are some of the things that we're trying to ensure and make sure that the, it doesn't happen. Uh, we highly encourage, highly encourage you to contact your band representatives and uh, talk to them and voice your concerns about it. And uh, a lot of the information we put out and we'll put out here this next week or so uh, will definitely be um, the guidance that we, we foresee in assisting the nation moving forward in the long run. Because short-term short -term developments have a tendency to um, go by the wayside. Uh, go by the wayside um, and have long lines. So <laughs> what we're going to look at is make sure that uh, every uh, every bit of funding um, is done in a way that's uh, concise and uh, beneficial to every tribal nation. So to answer questions as far as like, what am I going to get out of it? The nation will benefit as a whole. That's one of the things that we're looking at. Of course, the elderly will be taken care of. And the children will be taken care of. And uh, in between... We're always going to be taken care of, but uh, you do have some good people that are working diligently hard um, after hours in some cases, but uh, making sure that this is done efficiently and um, beneficial to every member uh, of the nation as possible. This Friday, uh, May 29th, May 29th, uh, will be the first uh, shipment of food that we will be getting in for another round of distribution. Now keep in mind, this round, in order to uh, facilitate a organized chaos, if you will, uh, we're asking that if you haven't been contacted yet by your church or by your ceremonial ground, that one of the um, areas that will be distributed to this week, uh, the 29th, will be uh, Stajati churches and our... Um, ceremonial of uh, Gar Creek. They've already been contacted. And these churches have been contacted. So May 29th um, is the date that a distribution will be going out. However, another round of distribution will be coming out uh, the following week. Uh, right now, it looks as if we will be able to receive uh, one truckload of uh, items, boxed items of food a week be able to receive one uh, truckload of uh, food to distribute amongst our tribal uh, citizens uh, each week and right now we're uh, with this distribution that's going out on Friday we're trying to get a baseline of how it's going to operate how many personnel we need to get it out up and running and uh, uh, hopefully through the next following weeks we'll be able to receive these trucks all the way up till the end of June so We'll be able to uh, uh, get an idea of how it, it's going to go and how it's going to work out. So if you haven't been contacted by your church or, or uh, organization uh, at this time, um, 
it's uh, distrib- distributing this week for uh, uh, churches and uh, a ceremonial ground. So more information to follow. Um, I think that's probably about the most information I've got right now. I can't think of any more. Uh, but continue to monitor our Seminole Nation of Oklahoma Facebook page. Uh, Twitter, we're on Twitter, Seminole Nation. We're also on uh, YouTube, got the YouTube channel, which we upload a lot of our videos. And our Instagram our, for our arts folk. If you got any pictures you want to send us, something you want to relay to the uh, general public, uh, please send us any photographs you may have and with a caption and a... Uh, 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 who took the photo and that way we'll get them up on our Instagram site as well. Let's see. All right. Well, I've got uh, a little after uh, 11. I'm going to segue into uh, and get somebody over here. That's going to help out. And you know him, you love him. Um, the resident uh, Chata, uh, Mark D. Williams. I've asked him to come in. And uh, sit down and uh, banter, if you will, a little bit about what's going on. Um, he's been really busy of late, you know, during this time. we He's one of our uh, guys that works out of his office. And um, he's done a really good job of uh, kind of making sure that some of these things happen and providing input on uh, our, our visual uh, ideas that we have through Seminole Nation. And... He's a really good storyteller, and I encourage you, you know, and give him a uh, give him a t- chance to plug his uh, sites at the end here. But uh, he does a lot of freelance work. He does a lot of uh, basketball watching here of late too. Watching ESPN's Last Dance. Um, we have a group chat, uh, myself and him, and man, I might be telling a little bit too much myself. You and Jeremy and Delaney and and Angela. Uh, we we group chat and and uh, talk about things. We solve world problems that way too. I think with uh, uh is it gifts or gifs? I say gifs. Okay, gifs. So, <laughs> so if you're on social media, <laughs> I don't know if it's right, but I say gifs. You're on social media, you know these little pictures tell stories too. So that's kind of what Mark does too with his uh, photography and and film. And so today he'll be our guest uh, uh, and and sharing a little bit about what he does and who he is and and. Um, yeah. Also on our on our Facebook group, we just mostly make fun make fun of Delaney mostly. We make fun of Delaney. Well, it's, it's <laughs> we make fun of Delaney. I'm gonna give him a plug. If hey, it's been raining. Oh, it's yeah. been raining, raining a lot. If you need someone to cut your grass, Delaney Pinnock. He's the man. Contact Delaney Pinnock. All right, give him give him some uh, give him some props out there, but he can he can cut it. Well. Uh, well, I'm trying to think of the cho- what's the Choctaw word for hello? Halito. 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 All right, Mark, is this your first time here on the program? In Second front? time, Second. I think. Uh, when I first started here, you guys brought me on. Um. So yeah, this be a second. Time. How long have you been here? August, early August. So coming up on a year. Close to it. All yeah, right. getting that big race. <laughs> Well, how you been handling this uh, <laughs> this uh, COVID? How's it affected you? I mean, uh, you're you're a, uh, a father. You have a Coda, um, mm-hmm. and and then how's that affected you? You're you're pretty active on Instagram, and that's what I like too, telling the story about you between you and Coda. But how's this affected you? Um, well, you know, we're home all the time now, so there's nothing really, you know things that he liked to do you know bowling and going to the movies he really loved those kind of things and i guess the zoo is open now but for the longest time it wasn't open we used to always go to the zoo um but one of the things is he just loves going to the park and just to run and so we would sometimes go out there we we just moved to shawnee so we have a there's a park not too far from us where it's just an open space where he could just go and run oh good um he's learning to ride a bike now and so we'll just find open spaces and ride bikes. And it's good for me, too, just kind of get out and get some movement and, you know, get out there and do something. So um, so that's pretty much what, we, what we've what we been doing. Um, and so we're, yeah, yeah, we're getting, we're getting by. <laughs> uh, Mark, I uh, asked him to come in today to, to shoot his video because uh, I'm not I'm not that, I'm, I don't, I'm not the artist on shooting video, but I, I like the, his style. And one of the things that, uh, that, his production, his stylized productions, uh, produce are are the feels. Uh, sometimes you get the feels when you look at something. And uh, yesterday, uh, 
uh, he premiered the um, Seminole Nation Honor Color Guard video appreciation video on our Facebook page. It's also going to be on YouTube as well, mm-hmm. a link provided. But uh, uh, what went into producing that? What went into uh, getting it out as yesterday's final release? What, what went into uh, your process? Can you share a little bit? Well, I remember, I guess it was back in like January or something, I came to your office and asked you about certain... What I wanted to do was have some videos shot, put together and ready to go when certain holidays or certain events came, we had it ready Mm -hmm. to go. Mm -hmm. One of the things we mentioned was what happened yesterday, uh, Memorial Day. And so I knew the um, Civil Nation Honor Guard was um, one of the first... Well, they were the first tribal mm-hmm. honor guard here in the state of Oklahoma, and uh, Coda's grandpa is actually one of the one of the members. Mm-hmm. And so I thought this would have been a good video to put together for for what uh, for yesterday's holiday. And so we uh, got in touch with Rex Haley, and it just worked out that that weekend they were going to get together with everybody because one of the things I thought would be a challenge is to interview everybody. Or try to get everybody's schedule for one sit down where we can get to you know do one one day of interviews. That weekend they happened to get to have a meeting, and so we shot it at a church in uh, Wewoka, and um, they were very. They just they seemed like this is kind of what I find with elders too is they have stories to tell and they have stories they want to tell. Mm-hmm. It's just right. a matter of us taking our time to sit down and listen, right. and that's kind of what happened. You know they wanted to talk about their experiences and uh, when they were in the service and what inspired them to enlist and what happened over there and then why they joined the honor guard and so yeah they were more than willing to tell their stories and so it just um everything kind of just came together really well um there was more i wanted to do with it i wanted to kind of go on the other side of it and interview the families you know and talk about because one of the things that the untold stories, I guess, is the sacrifices they have to do. Yeah. You know? Yes. And so I wanted to kind of get their side of it as well. But then that's about this time when the whole pandemic thing started. So, you know, we didn't get a chance to go out there and interview the families. But we had enough to do a little 20-minute short film, which we put out yesterday. Mm-hmm. And from what I can tell, it's been getting good, pretty good feedback. Absolutely. I mean, one of the things that I, uh, came to mind when I first started reading some of the comments there was like, yeah, this deserves a sequel. This deserves <laughs> something, you know. Yeah. This is going to be a follow up or even something longer, and um, you know, it might be, you know, it might be in the works. You know, it, it, might, yeah. You know. it, I mean, one of the, the the challenges when you're editing and putting these things together is you get so much footage, so much content, and I think we shot about four and a half, almost five hours of just stories, just for a twenty minute for piece, a twenty right? minute piece. Mm-hmm. So you get, one of the challenges you got to leave a lot of stuff out. What makes it in? What makes it out? And so there's a lot of stuff out there that didn't make it in. That I want to, you know, we could probably make a second second part. Or one of the things I told some of the families too is, I'm going to do cut the full interviews and then give it to the families as well, so they mm-hmm. can have it on, on a DVD or something, so they can something they can share to their kids and grandkids. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's uh, that's definitely a, a gift to them. I mean, you mm-hmm. know, to see to see that uh, you know what you've done as a filmmaker and, and what you've seen uh given over to them because sometimes uh, i know i know having been on the other side of that like that receiving in um having an, an eye like that kind of um it, it, it's it's a good feel it's a good feel it's a good uh sometimes closure too mm-hmm. on a lot of yeah. things uh what are some projects you're working on now what are some things you got you got time with coronavirus to time what do you what do you got going on now what are some ideas well we just uh, over the weekend um visited with edwin marshall over there in watonka mm-hmm. and um him and his uh some of his kinfolk had a hog butchery and uh billy fields is the one that set everything up and it, t- it took place on edwin's land mm-hmm. um they kind of wanted to get together and just to kind of show some of their sons and nephews you know how things used to be back then and and also kind of during this pandemic time that there's other ways that we, you know we can uh there's other resources that we can use to to survive and so this is the way that they used to do back in the day and so they wanted they wanted an opportunity to kind of show their some of the younger generation so edwin called me up and asked me to come out there and document it and so um 